A popular Dodger arrested. What we're learning about why Julio Urias was taken into custody. And Beyonce's birthday blowout. The music legend that showed up at Queen Bee's last SoFi Stadium show. You're watching The Rundown. I'm Adrian Arambulo in for Robin Winston. Julio Urias, one of the Dodgers' key starting pitchers, has been arrested and charged with felony domestic violence. And his future with the team is now very much in doubt. Urias was booked and released over the weekend. Not clear whom he allegedly attacked. Also, not the first time that he's been in trouble with the law. In 2019, he was arrested for domestic battery at the Beverly Center, but the L.A. City Attorney deferred prosecution. Instead, Urias was ordered to complete a year-long domestic violence counseling program. He was also suspended for 20 games. Dodger fans that we spoke with say they are disappointed. Yeah, it's a shame. It's terrible for the team. It's a terrible blow because here we are coming down the stretch and the very place where we're uh, a week is in starting pitching. So far, we haven't gotten a comment from a Urias spokesperson. The Dodgers, though, did release a statement saying, quote, we are aware of an incident involving Urias. While we attempt to learn all the facts, he will not be traveling with the team. Right now, the Dodgers are in Miami for a series with the Marlins. Another local business targeted by criminals. Four people caught on camera breaking into a smoke shop in Highland Park over the weekend. Now, the thieves appear to be prepared, sawing their way through locked gates, making their way inside before an alarm sounds. Within 60 seconds, they're in a back office grabbing everything that they can from TC Smoke Shop, including cash and cartons of cigarettes. They get out in under two minutes, taking more than $8,000 worth of merchandise. We spoke with LA Mayor Karen Bass about this rise of this type of crime here. One of the things that concerns me is that the overall impact that that has on Angelinos who will now say, I don't even want to go out and go shopping. I'll just do everything online. And that has a severe impact on our economy. Now, regarding the burglary in Highland Park so far, no arrests have been made. Anyone who has information about this break-in is asked to call police. Two dozen healthcare workers have been arrested after a rally and march in front of the Kaiser Permanente Medical Center in Hollywood. The LAPD declared an unlawful assembly right around 11.30 yesterday, but uh, most people left. 25 people, though, stayed and were taken into custody. The rally started at Los Feliz Elementary School. Workers say they want better working conditions and an increase in pay. The main problem with this crisis is the type of patient care that we're providing now, the delay of services, and just the wait times and the misdiagnosis is because of the short staffing. Kaiser released a statement about the negotiations saying they are committed to bargaining with the unions in good faith and in the spirit of partnership. Information about a strike authorization vote targeting video game production companies is now being sent to eligible SAG-AFTRA members. As we've been reporting, they're already on strike against film and television studios. Union officials say it's been almost a year since its video game contract was extended beyond the original expiration date and that companies like Activision, Blind Light, Epic Games have failed to address their needs. SAG-AFTRA is seeking an 11% retroactive wage increase along with mandatory rest breaks, on-set medics, and vocal stress protections. Voting on the strike authorization will close September 25th. Beautiful out there. Cool, cloudy. Let's get a check of your forecast with meteorologist Belen de Leon. Hi everyone, here's what you can expect in your forecast for the rest of the week. It's felt very pleasant lately, a little like fall with these below normal temperatures. Enjoy that, we're going to continue to experience it. That onshore flow still in our forecast, bringing this persistent marine layer. But all this changes as we head into the weekend. The heat moves in and we have less of that marine layer. Here's the weather setup. There is a heat right now over the central part of the country. That's going to be expanding in our direction as we get closer to the weekend. Thursday, Friday, you'll start to notice those temperatures a little bit warmer and it gets really hot this weekend hot for September here's what I'm talking about the trend in Van Nuys 82 on Tuesday Wednesday 85 and notice how we keep going up that weather roller coaster 90s by the end of the week and triple digits this weekend so enjoy the cooler weather while it lasts Steve Harwell the retired lead singer of the band Smash Mouth has died Harwell co-founded the band in 1994 and rose to international fame with hits like All Star and a cover of the song I'm a Believer. The band's manager told NBC News that Harwell passed away peacefully Monday, surrounded by his family and friends at his home in Boise, Idaho. For the past decade, he battled heart and neurological conditions and retired two years ago to focus on his health. Harwell was 56 years old. And the mass exodus continues at the Burning Man Festival. A long line of vehicles snaked through the remote Nevada desert. The way out is a five-mile dirt road to a highway. It's dry now, but that was definitely not the case a couple of days ago. 
The annual event hit with unexpected torrential rains last week and the muddy mess trapped about 70,000 people for days. They were told to stay put, conserve food, conserve water, and you can imagine the relief they felt when they were told that they were finally free to go. We're making it out. <laughs> with the rain and everything, I'm really glad I didn't bring my vehicle now because with the mud it would have been, yeah. But the roads dried up quite well, so I'm really impressed with how fast everything is moving. For those who stuck around, they got to see the finale of the event, the burning of a wooden tower with a giant statue of a man on top. And we're learning about an amazing act of heroism that may have saved an entire block of homes during the Maui wildfires, and it was all captured on video. NBC's Sam Brock has the story and the dramatic pictures. I want you to record everything when we're leaving. Right from those first heart-stopping moments, Jessica and Stephen Pickering knew their time was precious, leaving Lahaina with flames on their heels. Oh my God. And a wall of smoke in the rearview mirror. We tried to get out of the neighborhood, but were blocked by cars. Along the way, they spot a flash of fire in the bushes. Oh my God, it's right there in the bushes. What? The fire! Oh, it's in the bushes! Stephen leaps from the car to put out the flames, threatening a complete stranger's house. Stephen, we're gonna get stuck! Come on! Were you thinking at all, this is crazy and it could cost us our lives? Yes. But what did his actions actually end up doing? I think that he saved that area of the neighborhood. Oh. The Pickering say they barely survived without emergency sirens or even a text to warn them. I haven't personally heard of a single notification that anybody received in all of my social network, period. Out of how many people do you think that you've talked to? Hundreds. Hundreds. Maui County's response is under investigation, though officials have maintained that they warned residents through text and police loudspeakers in neighborhoods, but they haven't specified where or when. Always better safe than sorry. Lies and safety over structure anytime. C. Ray Beltran spent more than 15 years with the Maui Emergency Management Agency as a senior safety official. I would have said full evacuation. In the morning? In the morning, knowing the winds are this high. They're, they're super high. Prepare for the worst and then hope for less. The road to recovery looks long for Jessica and Stephen. One of their Maui diving shops went up in flames along with about a million and a half dollars worth of inventory. Having to say that we have nothing and hold your hand out and ask for help is really humbling and hard. Still, there's a soulful silver lining across town in the Smith household where Drew Smith recognized something familiar on go. social media. I said, honey, come in here. Look at this, there's a guy saving the house. I said, oh my God, it's, it's our neighborhood. And then we started looking, we we're like, this is our house. Smith says he's putting the Pickerings in his will. As for Stephen and Jessica, they have their lives and their love. Oh my God, it's right there in the bushes. And a whole bunch of neighbors ready to help them out if they ever need a hand. Sam Brock, NBC News, Lahaina. It's an amazing story there. All right. A lot of consideration goes into buying a car, but safety is likely the top category, or certainly up there. Tougher crash tests, though, mean there are fewer cars on the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, or IIHS, top safety picks list. For 2023, the agency used an updated version of a test to see how safe passengers in the rear seat would be after a front impact crash. So here's how their top safety picks for 2023 in the midsize category did in this specific test. The 2023 Hyundai Sonata was rated poor because the crash test dummies in the back moved too much under their seat belts. The sedan did score well in other test areas. The 2023 Toyota Camry was rated marginal, did better than the Sonata, but not by much. The 2023 Subaru Outback earned an acceptable rear seat safety test rating. And the 2023 Honda Accord earned the agency's top rating of good in this specific test. Well, the Rams played their first game of the season Sunday, and star receiver Cooper Cup may not suit up. The Super Bowl MVP has missed weeks of practice with a hamstring injury, and a recent setback put his status for the season opener in question. Rams coach Sean McVay revealed that the star receiver needs more treatment, and he's now seeking help from a specialist out of state to get to the bottom of this issue. I think the most important thing is, is whenever he's able to take the field, whether that be this week, whether that be week two, whatever it is, you know, as long as he's able to have that return to performance, he's feeling like the Cooper Cup that we all know and love. And he's got some clarity on, all right, what is really going on? I think that'll, uh, you know, be a really good situation for us. Rams open the season Sunday in Seattle against the Seahawks, and the Chargers are going to host Miami on Sunday at SoFi Stadium. 
Well, the stars came out for the final night of Beyonce's Renaissance Tour concert at SoFi Stadium, and the rumors of a surprise guest for Beyonce's birthday show turned out to be true. That is the legendary singer Diana Ross who came out and led the entire stadium in singing Happy Birthday to Beyonce. Afterwards, she gave a heartfelt speech thanking her, families, her uh, family, her fans, and the original members of the uh, record-breaking group Destiny Child. And you know what? Robin Winston was out there as well to sing Happy Birthday to Beyonce. So maybe they got a chance to celebrate after the show. You never know. All right, the Rolling Stones have announced their first studio album in 18 years. The band made the official announcement on their social media accounts Monday. The album is said to contain original new songs that the group has been recording over the past few years. And according to Variety, at least one song will feature surviving Beatles members Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr. The album is titled Hackney Diamonds. A new world record was set between two baseball teams. They finished a game that started Thursday and lasted 100 hours. Thankfully, it was a charity game by two Kansas City baseball teams. The game ended on Labor Day, but during that long stretch, each player took on four-hour shifts and then rested for eight hours. The record previously held by a Canadian team at 87 hours for this particular game. The final score, 468 to 307. All right, you can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and on our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune in to Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays from 4 to 7 a.m. We bring you all the day's headlines. Thank you for watching The Rundown.